Hey, what's up guys, Benny here, and welcome to my 43 huge tips to get better at Call of Duty Warzone in the Dansk 84. This is a video that's all about helping you and your squad get better at Warzone so you can secure those wins. And if your mate needs to get better, make sure you send them this as well. Plus, if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button as 70% of you watching are not subscribed to the channel and you'll get better at Warzone, I promise. A big thank you to Lenovo Legion for sponsoring this video as I've just got my hands on their brand new Legion 5 laptop in Phantom Blue that has just landed, which comes with an NVIDIA RTX 3070 graphics card and the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H processor, which is insane to play games like Warzone on as you also get access to NVIDIA features like DLSS and NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. Plus, when I'm playing a game like Warzone, performance is crucial and being able to play the game with high frame rates and a monitor that can back that up is super important and this laptop knocks it out of the park. As it also comes with a 165 hertz IPS display along with Nahemic audio that's going to help you pinpoint the direction of those enemy footsteps. Plus, if you're looking to play something that's not just Warzone, the laptop also comes with a one month trial of Xbox Game Pass, which gives you access to over 100 great games across multiple genres, including titles like Halo Infinite on day one of release, which is something I cannot wait to play. And on top of that, it also comes with Windows 10. But honestly, my Lenovo Legion 5 is an incredible piece of hardware that I take with me wherever I go now. So I can play games whenever I want at a high standard. That Xbox Game Pass as well is just an extra cherry on top. But if you want a laptop to play Warzone or any other game on, make sure to check this out down in the description below. And you can also go ahead and use code BENNY10 for a discount. But now let's go ahead and get into the tips. My first tip to get better at Warzone is have a clear strategy at the start of the match. Have a look at the drop line straight away and pick a drop location that either has a chopper, which is going to give your squad a lot of mobility early on in the game, or a contract like a scavenger to get your loadout as fast as possible. Obviously, you can also drop on high loot zones such as Superstore that will have a similar experience every single match. But remember, this could leave you with limited options along with having a high risk of going to the Gulag. In order to get your game off to the best start, you also want to be making sure you land first. To do this, jump out of the chopper at 700 meters from your drop location and look straight. Then once you get to around two thirds of the way down on the bar on the right hand side of your screen, look straight down and this will get you to your destination in the fastest possible time. Though you'll also need to make sure you've got the parachute auto deploy setting off. If you've got it on, you'll never beat good players to high value targets like scavenger contracts or choppers. Though one thing I will say is, expect to pancake a lot at the start as you get used to cutting it as close to the ground as possible. To make sure you win the race as pulling your shoot and cutting it too early could cost you the perfect start. Now, my next tip, I cannot stress this enough. Learn to loot quickly. One of the ways to do this is adopt the rule of constantly be moving. If you're stopping to look at loot, you're doing it wrong. Something I found really helpful is have a loot priority system in your head for the start of a game or when you're regaining. For me, that's a primary weapon, ideally a Farah, a PPSH or an LC10, then a plate to get full HP. And then afterwards, I just prioritize cash so that I can get my loadout or my teammates as quickly as possible. Also make sure you've got a high mobility weapon on you at all times, such as a pistol or SMG, until you get your loadout. That movement speed that you gain should never be undervalued, as it can allow you to loot faster and get your loadout as fast as possible. Something else that's super important to get off to a good start in Warzone is make sure you land with your squad. For example, when I land at hospital with my team, one of us will grab the chopper and the other three will all go top hospital. Yes, not every single one of your squad will get a primary weapon, but strength in numbers when you've got just a pistol and no plates should not be undervalued. Also, unless you know an enemy 100% has a primary weapon and they've been downed at the start of a game, don't worry about finishing them. Focus on targets that could actually down you or one of your teammates as a priority. 
A simple tip we all forget to do sometimes is make sure to plate up. Like we've all been there when watching one of our friends play and you've got to remind them to plate. There's nothing worse than losing a fight because you're not on max health when you could have been. So plate up. One of my biggest tips in Warzone, which is also very important early game, is learn when to run away. Sometimes to win the war, you need to lose the battle and running away from a fight can do exactly that. If you don't have the numbers, if you don't have the best weapons or the best position, disengage and then re-engage when you have some kind of advantage. The best players in the world don't rack up 30 kill games every match by challenging every fight, but they do that by making sure they've got the upper hand in most of their fights and staying alive. My next tip to get better at Warzone is you need to make sure that you can use the buy station quickly. Doing well at Warzone is all about speed. The faster you do things, the less chance you have of getting caught out. So when you can, just spend some time learning where everything is on the buy station and get into the habit of already making the decision of what you're buying before you use it. Oh, and a simple tip for you, if you're the one buying the loadout or an extra kill streak, don't forget your stuff at the buy station. The amount of times I've forgotten to go back and pick up my dead silence or stopping power rounds after the loadout is painful. Another big tip for Warzone is learning to move around the map quickly without a vehicle. I did this when vehicles were briefly removed from the game, but make sure you use the game's verticality to your advantage. Taking a zip wire to the top of a roof and then jumping off is going to give you far greater mobility. Though, remember, be aware of your surroundings when doing this as you can get shot out of the sky. Also, when jumping off of a building, you can actually travel further if you jump sideways. This makes you descend slower at around 6 meters a second while still flying at the same speed. There are also some jump spots around the map that you can only do if you use this technique, so make sure you start doing it. Next, something else you definitely want to make sure you're doing whilst moving around the map is slide cancelling. This not only allows you to move a little bit faster around the map, but it also makes you a harder target to hit. To make this easier on yourself, make sure you have tap to slide on in your settings. Then all you need to do to slide cancel is tap tap jump. This will eventually become muscle memory and is also needed for some of the advanced movement techniques you'll want to be using in gunfights. My next tip to get better at Warzone is something you'll see all the pros do when aggressively challenging gunfights, and that's the bunny hop. This is tricky to perfect, but when you jump around a corner, you'll want to run, jump, and then just as you're about to touch the ground, you'll want to hit jump again. And this will allow you to bunny hop, which gives you some additional momentum and is hard for opponents to track, making it more likely for you to win the gunfight. Another great tip that a lot of players don't do is prone dropping around a corner. When you're going to push a corner, what you'll want to do is slide into the corner and then as you're in the slide, start holding crouch so you go into prone. This will mean you'll be at prone as you hit the corner, which enemies just don't expect and you'll be able to pick up some easy kills. Then to keep your momentum going, remember to go from prone to standing as quick as you can by hitting jump whilst you're in prone. Now, the reason that I'm giving you all these movement techniques is because one of the biggest tips is that you always need to be on the move. Almost no top player is stationary for more than a couple of seconds. And if you're holding down a building, you always want to keep checking every single angle possible because Warzone is a game that is constantly evolving and there's always a chance a player will appear from a spot that you've just checked. My next tip to get better at Warzone is to make sure you always get the high ground. In team fights, it cannot be undervalued how helpful it is to have someone holding the rooftop or the top of the hill. Also, with Verdansk KT4, there are so many more routes onto the top of buildings, so when you can, take those extra few seconds to get the high ground. Another important tip to get better at Warzone is learning to flank your opponents in big squad fights especially. The amount of times I get so many easy kills because my teammates are in a gunfight and I'll just run along the crest of a hill and then pop up at a completely different angle will shock you. So pull off those flanks. Also remember, you don't always need to be the one who gets a kill. When you flank an opponent, you're stretching the enemy team. And when you start shooting at them, they'll try and readjust, which will give your teammates the perfect opportunity and angle to take them out. Remember, it's a team game. My next tip to get better at Warzone is something a lot of people forget, and that's the power of the pause. 
What I mean by this is everyone is always trying to make a play in a gunfight. And sometimes all you need to do is wait for the opponent to try and push you. Just think about it. If you're being chased by an opponent, they almost get into a full sense of security where they're just trying to catch you up. So if you get around a corner, turn around and just wait, they'll just run into you completely in the open, giving you the best opportunity to pick up the kill. My next tip is to make sure your team gets a chopper. I cannot tell you how overpowered choppers are in Warzone, especially if you're trying to get high kill games. A chopper almost guarantees you map position and high ground in every single gunfight that you get into. Plus, if you're a good pilot, you can make sure your teammates get a lot of easy kills. Which is my next tip. When you've got your squad in your chopper, you need to think of two things. First of all, where you're dropping your team off to get an angle on the enemy squad. And then secondly, where you're dropping out. You'll want to make sure you fly low within 13 meters of the first drop so your teammates don't need to pull their chutes. And then you'll want to fly directly over the enemy squad. In most situations, the enemies will keep shooting at the chopper, which will allow your teammates just to shoot them in the back. Trust me, it works every time. Now, something I'm guilty a lot of with the chopper is throwing it at an enemy to get it down. Now, this really is only ever a good idea if your chopper has no health left. Otherwise, it's a terrible play. Never sacrifice your chopper unless you have to. The ability to get perfect map position is too valuable, though learning to throw a chopper well is a helpful skill as it can help you with some clutch plays. Now, my next tip is one that is actually really overpowered and a reason there was a gentleman's agreement for it not to be used in competitive multiplayer, and that is to make sure you've got auto tax sprint on. This means that you're constantly at the highest mobility possible and can make sure you can easily close gaps to non-auto tax sprint players. It also allows you to do things like throw your C4 the furthest distance, bunny hop further and much, much more. It does take a while to get used to and the only con is trying to hip fire whilst moving forwards. But after a time, you learn to strafe hip fire and 99% of the time, you should be aiming down sights in gunfights anyway, unless you're using the street sweeper shotgun. Now, I know earlier in the video, I mentioned about making sure that you plate up, but there are some situations in Warzone where you don't always need to be fully plated. If you're in a big team fight or you're getting pushed, it's sometimes better to stop plating and just make sure that you're not caught mid plate animation. Learning when and when not to do this comes with time, but keep it in your head whilst you're playing. Now, my next tip is audio is king. The ability to be able to clearly tell where enemy footsteps are, the sound of someone reloading is going to help make you make the best decisions possible. So spend a moment to set your audio settings up. This is what I personally use. Also, use a headset. It'll give you a huge edge against someone that isn't. And if you're looking for a new headset, make sure to check out my partners, Turtle Beach, down in the description below. One of my favorite things to do in Warzone is using audio to bait opponents to push you. And there's a couple of ways that you can do this. In a team fight, you can fake a res if one of your squad is down. And normally, this will just make an opponent sprint straight at you. Another thing that you can do if you're getting chased is break some glass, but stay inside the room. This will make the opponent think that you're running away. And the final way is just shoot your gun as if you're fighting another squad. It'll make your opponent think that they can easily push you and you can pick up an easy kill. Now, my next tip for you to get better at Warzone is to help you with your perk 2 decision. Now, I use either Ghost or Restock depending on the situation. If I'm going for high kill games and I'm running stun grenades, I'll use Restock. Otherwise, I'll run Ghost and a Heartbeat Sensor in things like 2v2 tournaments. But in the end, use what suits your playstyle. If you're an aggressive player that constantly pushes and uses vehicles to get around the map, Restock is going to be a lot more helpful. And if you play a lot slower and like to hold up the edges of the map or in buildings, Ghost might just be the way to go. Now, my next tip is actually one I find really helpful for getting a lot of kills, and it's how I make my decisions on where to go on the map. First of all, I constantly check my map for vehicles to see if vehicles have appeared or disappeared. If a vehicle has appeared on the map that wasn't there before, you know an enemy squad or two are in that area. It's a small thing, but definitely helps you find nearby squads when you can't see anyone. 
Which leads me on to the next way of finding players if your game is feeling a little bit slow, and that's pushing towards buy stations. Buy stations are hot spots at almost all stages of a match, especially during circle collapse. So if you want to find some enemy squads because your area is a little quiet, pop open that minimap and head towards the nearest buy stations. Something else I want to stress in this tips video to help make you a better player is the way you use the gas. Some of the easiest kills that you'll ever get is by using the gas to force players out into the open. That's why you always want to pay attention to the gas timer. It'll be better for you to wait 30 seconds than to push a squad inside of a building or at the top of a hill. So rotate towards the new circle edge and hold it and you'll get some easy kills. Some of the best plays I've ever made in Warzone is because I'm not afraid of the gas. This only really applies when you've got a gas mask, but remember, in the end circles especially, you can just dip back into the gas to pull off a flank. It's the place that no one expects to get pushed from. Plus, going back to the power of the pause, sometimes you can allow the play to unfold around you just by waiting in the gas for a few extra seconds, so you don't become the center of attention. Next, one of the most important tips to get better at Warzone is learning trigger discipline. Sometimes the best thing you can do is not shoot your gun, even if you feel like you can get the down, because especially in squad fights, you can draw attention to your entire squad in a bad position, which ends up getting everyone killed and costing you the game. This is especially true in the final stages of a match where every squad is trying to find squads to eliminate. If you start shooting, the entire lobby will just focus on you. So unless you've got the best map position in the world, try and not shoot the second you see someone. Next, one of the quickest ways to get better at Warzone with your squad is clean comms. Shouting over there is one of the worst things that you can do because it makes complete sense from your perspective but not to any of your teammates. Start doing things like saying enemy on orange ping or enemy crossing the road from right to left at the tree line. Just try to be as clear as possible and you'll be shocked at how much it helps your squad and yourself. Now, I know at this stage, this shouldn't really need to be said, but make sure you've got the best class setups for your guns that you can possibly have in your loadout. Custom guns are the most overpowered thing in the game, and if you don't have a good setup at the end game, it could really end up costing you. Also remember, loadouts come at 13 seconds at the end of the first circle, and then 53 seconds on the fifth if you don't have yours already. If your squad has been wiped and sent to the gulag, you want to prioritize regaining as quickly as you can. One of the best ways to do this is start off with a simple supply run. Whoever wins their gulag first goes straight for the contract, the second then completes it. Remember, if you complete a contract with people still alive in the gulag, they'll still get that cash, which can help you get a loadout again as quickly as possible. Earlier in the video, we talked about choppers being one of the most important things to get your hands on, but if you can't do that, the next best thing is a big bertha. Honestly, the amount of kills and situations that I win because I've got one of these is obscene. Also remember the get out of vehicle trick. If you drive past someone, go past them on their left hand side. This means you'll get out of the vehicle as they're still tracking it and you'll get an easy kill before they can even react. Berthas also take a stupid amount of damage, especially with a trophy on top. So if you see one, always make sure you grab it. It's a game changer. My next tip to get better at Warzone is make sure you spend the time learning the map. The better you know it, the better decisions you'll be able to make when it comes to rotations. You'll know exactly which hill or building has the strongest position based on the circle. The best way to do this is just drop into plunder by yourself and spend time exploring the map. Get used to certain buildings and areas that you like to play in because knowledge is power when it comes to Warzone. The next step from learning the general layout of the Danks KT4 is learning all the new jump spots. This is something that will drastically change your game and is a little bit more advanced, but knowing different ways of pushing buildings can really come up clutch in key fights because most people just don't expect players to come from certain directions and will just end up with you getting some easy kills because of it. So learn those jump spots. Now something I can't stress enough in Warzone is unless you have to, don't push a building. You want to make sure that when you get into a gunfight, it's always in your favor. And if you're pushing up a flight of stairs by yourself, it's not going to be in your favor and at best could be a 50-50. 
If you do have to push a building, however, as you have no choice in the final circles, make sure you try to do it from as many angles as possible with your team and do it quickly. Use your equipment and lethals. A long drawn out fight will normally go in favor of the defending squad, as most of the time they'll just be able to pre-aim you. My next tip is to make sure you use C4s. They went out of fashion a while back, but are in my opinion, the best piece of equipment purely for the fact of how easily they can take down vehicles, which can get you some really easy kills. Just get used to throwing them as far as possible whilst using tactical sprint, so you can then also throw them easily through windows to crack enemy armor. One of the best things to remember in Warzone to get better is the peeker's advantage. If you go from the right hand side of an object, you get a brief head start on an opponent. Other things come into play like your FPS, latency, but as a rule, this is one of the reasons I'll always try and be the person that initiates a gunfight when I'm holding a position. So make sure to take advantage of it. And my final tip to get better at Warzone is practice playing modes like solo duos, trios, and quads, depending on your skill level. Because getting yourself into positions where you're at a constant disadvantage will teach you how to win scenarios that you would otherwise lose. And then when you end up playing with your squad, you'll find it so much easier and be better at Warzone. But I hope these tips helped you. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I'll see you next time for more Call of Duty Warzone. Thanks for watching.